All right, you ready? Three, two, one. All right, everybody, welcome to the Tactical Games Podcast. Oh, shit, I think I screamed that into the microphone. Welcome to the Tactical uh-huh. Games Podcast. Uh, excited to have everybody here today. Uh, unfortunately, Gil couldn't make it, so uh, number two in line for the podcast yeah. is here with us. Yeah. Uh, Gil's gallivanting in Vegas bowling. Bowling. Yeah. I, that's a sport that apparently people still play. Apparently. <laughs> I, I just picture Gil and like a bunch of 70-year-old women. It, oh, a thousand percent. <laughs> a thousand percent. And he's giving them double vodka and sprites. <laughs> <laughs> and uh his new nickname's Munson now, apparently. <laughs> he is shit face wasted in Vegas right now, hobbling around. <laughs> Every Mike's hard lemonade he drinks, his face gets a shade pinker. <laughs> Best of luck to him out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you're having fun out there, James. Um, all right. So today we're gonna talk about Florida. Yep. Uh we're gonna talk about a little bit about camp, just because it's coming up this weekend or next weekend. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about YO Ranch because that's the weekend right after that. Yep. And uh, then we're going to get into uh, a discussion that um, we've talked about before, but I think we're going to bring it back up and kind of talk about how we're going to change things. Um, yep. So we're going to talk about PEDs, um, performance enhancing drugs for those of you that yep. are new to fitness. Um, but first, let's talk uh, Florida. Let's talk um, Holt, Florida. What were your thoughts? You know, what did you think of the event? Yeah, uh, the range was awesome. Uh, yeah. Leading up to that event, I'd been really looking forward to get to that range yeah. because Element of- Training Center, by the way, yep. highly recommend. That was cool if you're in the Florida area. Definitely yep. recommend going out there. Yep, super accommodating. Um, the staff there was great. Dion yep. was awesome. The owner was great. Uh, really, just really enjoyed the range overall. I mean, you can tell they put a lot of work into it over the last couple of years. If you look at the satellite images from you know a year and a half two years ago yep. it, there's nothing out there so uh the owner coming from a contracting background did a really great job of putting that facility together and uh built a good team around them so it was it was fun to be there um but definitely looking forward to being back there next year yeah yeah, yeah. definitely a venue that we'll return to mm-hmm. um i we had a great competitor turnout we had a great yeah. spectator turnout even on saturday when it was the weather was a little rainy like overcast mm-hmm. it wasn't it was windy um we still had a couple hundred spectators out there at yeah. least uh it was really cool during some of the stages, um, you know, I was, I was out on the field a little bit and, uh, looking back to actually see, uh, how many competitors or spectators are out there watching. Yeah. And that's always something I like to see. I like to see people watching people out there doing cool. For stuff. sure. For sure. But, I think we did a good job with the setup of that to really facilitate that spectating right there at yep. day two specifically. Yep. Um, and just the, the, the layout there is, is great because everything's really close together. So yep. I always, that always makes it easier to have spectators come out and yep. see what's going on from, uh, from bay to bay. What was your favorite stage of the weekend? Oh, definitely the big bag stage. Yeah. Yeah, with the yeah. gauntlet. That was awesome. Seeing uh, different body types trying to handle that from yeah. all the way down to Sal's size up to Willie's size and everybody in between trying to figure out how to pick it up, what's the best way to do it. That was uh, that was very cool. And the photos came out from that and uh, were also pretty impressive. Yeah. No, I, it was uh, it was cool to watch. It was fun to watch. It was uh, you know, we, we emphasize do not touch the bag before the event actually starts. Mm-hmm. And I enforce that. I think pretty well. I don't think anybody got to handle it beforehand. Yeah. We hid them the mm-hmm. day before. So it was awesome that when people tried it for the first time, they were trying it for oh, the yeah. first time. And, uh, it was cool to see like how they figured it out. And, mm-hmm. um, I, I, uh, there was a couple of competitors that I really liked watching out there. Um, it, it was definitely Slade was one of them. Yeah. Like Slade, like, Slade knows that he's not a top five competitor in the tactical games, but he goes out there and he, he gives his all oh, and 100%. he busted his ass on that stage and he yeah. worked hard and it was cool to see that. Yeah. I was definitely a big fan of watching him go through there. Um, watching the women adapt to that. Like, so the men used that uh, 400 pound bag filled with 165 pounds of crumb rubber. Um, if you can imagine, if you didn't see it, that bag four feet about that. Yeah. About four feet yeah. wide. Um, fully filled so it just it was this really strange bizarre object that they had to try to figure out how to move mm-hmm. multiple times i mean how many were there seven cross seven, members? seven cross members down so, back so 14 total each yeah. round so yeah. they they ran down they got a firing sequence in mm-hmm. they came back they moved the bag down seven beams so seven bags over bar they went and grabbed their magazines brought the bag back seven bags over bar had a firing sequence and then repeated that one more firing sequence and then finish. So they mm-hmm. did that a total of two times for 28 reps for bags. Yeah. The bar. yeah. Um, but it was really, that was a cool stage to watch for sure. Definitely. Um, my favorite of the weekend though, was the long range stage. The long range stage was awesome. It was cool. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, and I definitely really liked the run too. Mm-hmm. The, like the beach run. Which oh yeah. I know like a lot of people didn't get the opportunity to go out there. Um, we took the elite division, 
out to Fort Walton Beach, which is an absolutely beautiful beach. Um, one, one like that whole area is kind of uh, the start of 30A. Um, it's probably the most beautiful beaches in Florida if you haven't yeah. been down there. Emerald Water, White Sand Beach, really, really beautiful. Um, they had uh, about a five mile ruck. Um, the men had 30 pound rucks, the women had 20 pound rucks, and there were some impressive times. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the guys that were stationed in that area, I think the fastest time we saw was like 36 minutes, which is pushing seven minutes. Yeah. Especially on the beach with a ruck like yeah. that. That's kicking. Yeah. Yeah. I think the fastest, uh, women's time was like 42 minutes or 44 mm -hmm. minutes, somewhere around there. Anyway, yeah. so the times were very, very impressive. Um, it's always cool to watch people, how they react to running in a different environment. Cause yeah. like there were just people sitting on the beach. And you're wondering imagine, what was going on. Like, what the fuck is happening? You see a guy like Chris Hale running past you with the big ruck on. Chris, like, I love that dude. He's the best. Every he's time he's best. out there, man, he has a good time. He's yeah. enjoying himself. He doesn't take himself too serious, but he knows, like, he just wants to go out there and bro out. And just, yeah. Like, do the damn thing. And he does it. Yeah. He has fun. He talks shit and he kicks his, he kicks ass when he's out on the field. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's always good seeing Chris. Yeah. I, I like him a lot. Yeah. And, and just imagining him coming in. He said he came in last on the run, like a kid missing the bus. Like, hey, oh, yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> well, like we were all getting ready to leave, like packing <laughs> shit. I think I was the last one left. I was like, I guess Chris died. Uh, <laughs> Jared came in and Jared was like, man, Chris is out there. He doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but he came in with a smile on his face and like that stupid smile. That he came yeah. In with. Well, I felt bad because up until yesterday, we decided no rucks. Yeah. And then I had, I got tim tori chris i think one other person asked me about rucks and i was like no you guys aren't gonna run with rucks it'll be slick they're like all right great and then i see the real first thing in the morning i'm like oh damn they're gonna be so mad at me they're gonna think i lied to them <laughs> seeing everybody running with the rucks on and i, I got shit for it the next yeah. day it was pretty yeah. funny it, it uh um like there's always a little psyop in there yeah right? oh yeah like, you never know sometimes we decide to do rucks sometimes it's appropriate sometimes yeah. it's not um it really goes about like how the volume of the weekend plays into it and like do you want to trash somebody's legs and make the next day a little bit more difficult? So, yeah. Um, what were, what was a failure for the weekend? What was something that you think didn't go well? Um, I mean, we definitely had a scoring issue, uh, on Saturday, which yep. was super frustrating. It'd been a while since we'd had a, a late night scoring and, uh, Saturday definitely was a late night scoring, you know, yep. probably up until about one or one or one thirty. So, um, uh, you know, that little issue on my part, just not putting the right people in the right place for that. So, you know, moving forward, we've talked about that kind of breaking down the, you know, the volunteer brief and reconstructing what that SOP looks like to put the right people in place and, and focus on training that Friday instead of really just like, Hey, hi, bye type of deal yep um and then that way the next morning everybody's trained up they know what they need to do they yep. know where they need to go so um that was that was the biggest lapse on on my part that that was that was definitely the most loose thing that i felt that i i kind of i kind of failed on over the weekend um but sunday was smoother which you know it usually tends to you know we've kind of got everything in a groove by then so yep. um but yeah the scoring was definitely a frustration on saturday i was uh um underwhelmed by the bag hold stage i know it was difficult right yeah i know like yeah. at the elite level holding a 200 pound bag for four different sequences for a minute and 30 seconds mm -hmm. each like i saw people failing at that and yeah. that's what i want to get to right mm -hmm. like i want to get to a point where you're physically uncomfortable and you fatigued your muscles so bad that like it's hard to continue to hold yeah. and then when you get to the firing line you're out of breath from that hold because your muscles are starving for oxygen yeah. right so like um I was definitely, it was underwhelming in the lighter divisions, um, but that's kind of where you're at. If you're in the intermediate yeah. division and it's easy for you to hold a hundred pound bag for a minute and 30 seconds, move up. guess what? That's what the tactical division's for. Yeah. And if the tactical division's too easy, move on up. That's yeah. the elite division for, because I didn't see anybody that didn't struggle with the 200 pound yeah. bag. Yeah, for a minute and a half for four rounds, is, it's, it's, that's heavy. Yeah. It, yeah. it accumulates pretty quick. Yeah. After that second round, your, your posterior chain is, is on fire. Yeah. So. Um, there was one person that tried to skate the box standard that got nipped in the bud real quick and they were yeah. trying to step off the side. Dumbass shit. Yeah. But yeah, um, I, I, that got corrected and, and that stage went way better this yeah. time. Yeah. It went as intended as it was supposed yeah. to be in Arizona, which was great. Yeah. You know, it was, a, it was, that's a, that's probably the most sleeper physically event that we had for the weekend. Yeah. I don't think a lot of when you see a simple stage like that, you don't really think it's going to be as taxing as it is unless you do those that movement on a regular basis. Right. So if you're not doing that on a regular basis, you go to that, you're like, ah, I got this covered. It's a grind. Yeah. A hundred percent. Anytime that you're like that there is an easy enough movement that you can continue to do it no matter what. Yeah. Right. Like 
if it's a, a 250 pound bag and physically you don't you can't exert yourself anymore mm. you've met a wall and you can't proceed on any further when it's something that your body physically can do no matter what mm -hmm. and you choose to continue to do it yeah i love that and i love putting stages like that out there because it tests grit mm -hmm. and like you can test strength you can test endurance but testing grit is something that i think is super important for yeah. a sport yeah so i was i was i was happy with that one for sure i, I think that one went well too it did um so on the men's side, we had Kurt Fennell, first time, not first time competitor, but first time podium. Yeah. Uh, he finished first. I think he was the only one that cleared the elite version of the long range. He thing. was, yeah. Um, the elite version, we had 16 Six, targets. 16 targets. 16 total yeah. targets out there for, um, and the ranges were like 150 out to, I think our, we had two at 600. Yeah. Um, and a pretty spicy plate rack at like mm -hmm. 240, uh, or not plate rack, I'm sorry, uh, a pretty spicy like, uh, four inch plate that was out there too. That was, that was a good shot. Um, overall I was really impressed by how the whole field shot. Yeah. So I'm glad that people are really starting to take action on that and like mm -hmm. get more prepared when it comes to that. Like we call it long range. I think most people would refer to it as mid range, but, um, like really getting used to shooting at that distance, which is sure. cool. It's cool to watch that progression. Yeah, absolutely. I talked to Kurt after he shot that he had just come off of a, a three month long range, like a long range program. So he was pretty well prepped for that one. And when I was on it on early Saturday morning, uh, it was, it ate a lot of people's lunches. A lot yeah. of people left meat on the bones on yeah. that one, which you could, I mean, you just saw, it just exposed a lot of people's weakness yeah. for yeah. In, in particular to long range shooting. So, um, it was definitely a fun course. Like that whole, that whole 600, 600 yard bay was, was pretty cool with all the different implements you had to play yeah. with. It, it made it interesting for sure. It made it unique. I like that the berms were, they had known distance berms and like mm -hmm. the UK DR berms, which is pretty cool too. So, um, you know, I saw a lot of people out there all weekend ranging targets, which yeah. is awesome mm -hmm. that means that they're actually starting to understand and that's what we're trying to build right like a complete understanding of your weapon system so now there's people out there like oh shit i've got to range these targets mm -hmm. put in my ballistic calculator figure out like you know what i'm actually where my holds are going to be because yeah. you're on the clock and like half that shit goes goes sideways but, yep um so we had kurt we had sal uh and we had jose jose, jose yeah. was in like he's not new i think this is his second time competing i'm pretty sure okay um uh but he came out there and he crushed it that dude he did wrong he shot really well yeah he shot very very well all weekend like there was i don't i don't remember seeing a stage of his targets that he shot that he didn't shoot like 85 plus percent like he shot very very sharp yeah. so. and had a great physical showing too mm -hmm. yeah i think there was like maybe one stage that kind of wrecked him a little bit but if not he, him and sal were pretty tight yeah like, yeah they were that. and he's done he didn't have like a physique like you know you see willie right he's like oh that guy can put out a lot of power and lift some weight yeah yeah, yeah. um jose's got like kind of like middle of the ground type of physique like well-rounded yep but uh he was able to move some weight man it was yeah. pretty impressive the way he threw the 165 like the big the big 300 pound bag around was was cool man so that was awesome to see i, I um the axle stage was was maybe not a heavy stage for most, but I think for the field it was pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. um, it so was. I think people like it was repetition, right? Yeah. Like you, um, uh, weight by volume, I guess is a way to to describe it because you clean that bar at least three times, and you had to put it in the front rack or overhead position. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was I was a fan of that one. It was cool watching him go through that. On the women's yeah. side, we had E. Yep. Um, e took it took an event win. Um, she crushed it. Yeah, it was awesome watching her out there all weekend. Uh, then Janae came in second, and then we had Blair Drum who came in third. Um, all the women were out there and did a fantastic job. That was a really tight race as well. Mm -hmm. um, it was cool watching the women's side shoot that long range stage yeah because even their progression has been pretty amazing yeah. like it, it's great watching the dudes go out there and, and do it but watching the women go out there and really kind of crush it um blair's probably gonna hate me for this she had a super unconventional grip <laughs> when she was shooting the stage yeah. and immediately afterwards i looked at her husband and i was like did you teach her that it, it was like she planted her magazine down on uh just like the, a sandbag because it was a sniper's hide yeah. Uh, she put her magazine down on the sandbag. She grabbed her pistol grip and then she grabbed the back of her optic and scanned around and she won on the women's side. I think she only missed one target. Really? Maybe it was two targets. If it works, it works. <laughs> uh, so when she got done with the stage, I don't remember who said it, but somebody yeah. was like, I don't know what God you're praying to, but keep doing it. Cause that <laughs> shit was like, that was incredible. She, so that was cool. It was cool to watch. Get on her. That's awesome. Unconventional, but Hey, like what gets the job done, gets the job done at the end of the day. Like that's, people can talk shit, but you walk away with a W. Yeah. That's all that matters. Fuck them. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um all right so we got camp coming up yeah uh, it's gonna be fun next weekend i'm yep. pretty stoked about camp we got skirmish this weekend skirmish on saturday yep. we got camp next weekend yep and we got yo the weekend after that yep yeah um, hey, busy april yeah i'm excited to uh uh oh and then two weeks later we go to idaho 
And then two weeks later, we go to Pennsylvania. And we're on the road that whole two weeks. <laughs> so, it's nonstop for the next two months. Yeah. yeah. Easily. It's, uh, it's going to be a good two months. Though. I'm excited. It's going to be a fun summer for sure. I'm really looking forward to it. I, I've been looking forward to YO since we first went there. Yeah. Just, like, obviously, I love hunting. So the, everything about YO is super cool. Yep. And uh, just the event that we've got in mind for the setup that they have there is going to be so cool. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to a, a fun weekend. There. I'm excited to compete. Um, yeah. it, it's been a while since I've been able to go out there and compete. Um, I am a shell of the physical self that I used to be. So I'm going to get the shit kicked out of me. We know this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, Matt, uh, Matt Chan, my partner is yeah. a very gracious dude. So I think he's going out there to have fun with me. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll enjoy it. Um, so Jared and Zach, we've got Jared Halbert and Zach Rodman are teaming up. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going over the elite teams. Um, Clint Gower and David Merritt. So Clint I'm big, Gower's a beast. I'm a big Clint fan. I like I'm Clint a big Clint fan. He's awesome. Like He's him. awesome. And I'm really excited to see what he can do at the elite level. Yeah. Because watching him crush 40 plus is like. Yeah. He's in phenomenal shape. He's, he, great he's, shape. he's one of those guys that's in 40 plus that straddles the line. Yeah. Like he could he could compete in either and be competitive yeah. in either division. He, he's he's a top three guy in um he's a top three guy in 40 plus. He'd yeah. probably be a top 10 guy in, in elite. Yeah. Um. So it'll be cool to watch him out there for mm -hmm. sure. David Merritt's a, a stud too. So like. Yeah. There, you can't sleep on that guy. Um, Sal, and then I think his partner's Anthony Giuliano. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, so Anthony's been he's been a competitor for a couple of years now. Yeah. He's a, he's a pretty badass dude. Um, uh, Jose, and then I'm I'm not sure who his partner is, but Jose's coming back again. Yeah. Um, him and Sal are based out of San Antonio. They're in uh, San mm -hmm. Antonio SWAT there, so um, it'll be cool to watch him get back out there. Totally. Um, Justin Betancourt's competing. I, I don't know who his partner is. I don't know. Um, probably somebody from Mayhem as well. Mm -hmm. um, Justin's a, an absolutely awesome dude. So there's there's like uh, 13 elite men's teams right now. Uh, I think it's going to end up, we've been talking to um, uh, another unit that's going to send two teams. So I think we're going to have 15 men's elite teams. Yeah, it works out perfect. Uh, it, it'll be awesome. So uh, we talked about the YO run. Yeah. So there, the normal group is going to do the run that you and I did when we were out there. It's yep. around uh, what they call Africana, which is the pen where they have all the uh, um, African safari animals. Yep. So the run will get some really beautiful exposure to the range. Yeah. Uh, the run that the elites are going to do on the YO side is going to be brutal yeah i remember when we drove by the staircase that's going to finish that run <laughs> the dusting looking at it how would we how can we get that in the event yeah um and then actually now that we're going to be able to do it like i know i'm going to have to do it so i'm not looking forward to it yeah but i think that'll be another one of those things like so the trend this year has been the bisbee 100 we did that yep. run we ran on the beach in florida and this one taking the elites to um two dot to yep. do not only are they going to do a uh, a different run but we're going to set up a long range course over there yeah, too, which is going to be awesome. That and that area awesome. where we're going to shoot from is going to be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So exposure to kind of different areas where we can't take the whole group. Like it'd be awesome to take 200 and I forget how many competitors yeah. we have 210, 215 competitors over there. Um, but when we can take a small representation over there and do some cool shit, like yeah. I'm all about that. So I think that one's going to be going to be pretty cool. Um, uh, anything else you're looking forward for team event? Oh man, just it's just going to be a unique event. I mean, I know I've only been been around for the last year, but I mean, there's few places in the country that are like YO that can facilitate us an event like we put on. So yeah. I'm just excited for the uniqueness of it, and and just to see people's just jaws drop when they see the animals on the property and yeah. the layout of it. It's it's going to be really cool. So I'm I'm very this is the the event I'm looking forward to the most this year. So one of the things that we're doing, and um, I talked about it with Ryan. Uh, I think you were on the call. I don't remember if it was you or Ro. Um, so we're going to have a barbecue after, for awards. Yep. Yeah. I'm stoked about that. Yep. We're finally going to do a pig roast yep. for pig awards. Pig roast is going to be awesome. That's cool. Um, I oh. think it's also going to be cool that so many people are staying there and get to like yeah. hang out and like there's a little bit more because often when we go to events, like everybody scatters as soon as yeah. the day ends. So it'll yeah. be cool that everybody has like a common area that they can hang mm -hmm. out in that's like beautiful and for sure. And so, we got to do a good job of, of letting people know where that's at when yeah. we do our briefs and all that and, and check in and everything. We're going to give know. you a flag. And we're just going to make you stand up. We're going to give Colin a flag. There you go. And that's he's right. Wear the that's right. Suit. That's right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we have a new guy that we're going to be testing out over the next couple, a uh, couple weeks. Yep. Bringing him on the squad. Yep. And See how he hangs. You get to be somebody's boss. Nice. Are you going to abuse that power? No, no. You should no. immediately just abuse I'm it. I'm going to. I'm going to. <laughs> that, the Magpul suit idea was my idea. So we're going to. We're going to do that. Magpul apparently has a giant P-Mag um, suit. That you can dress up as like a 
plush PMAG. So hopefully PMAG man will be making, uh, what do we call him? PMAG, PMAG Peter. PMAG Peter. <laughs> PMAG Peter. I like PMAG it. PMAG Peter. PMAG Peter will be out there. That's Colin's yeah. new name. Yep. Uh, Cause Colin's a ridiculous name. Yeah. Yeah. We got to switch that up. PMAG Peter. That much. That's much more fitting. <laughs> All right. So, uh, the last thing that we're going to discuss today, um, this is something that came up after the last event. Um, it was something that was brought to my attention. Um, if one person's thinking it, then, you know, maybe there's more people that are thinking it. Um, and it's a serious concern and something that like needs to be discussed and needs mm. to be understood. So, um, there's a feeling that there are people out there that are using PEDs to gain an advantage in the sport. Um, that, you know, isn't necessarily like the TRT. I don't think anybody's really worried about that. People kind of started to understand like the mm -hmm. importance of having balanced testosterone. Yeah. Um, where you get into it. And it, this started to become pretty prevalent when I was like, um, you know, finishing up in, in CrossFit, like coaching and things like that with SARMs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that there's some peptides out there that can do some pretty awesome stuff. Uh, um, but like SARMs are generally not great for you cause yeah. a bunch of problems. Um, you know, there's like not a lot of long-term studies and how they affect you. Later mm -hmm. on. Um, so what we are going to do as an organization, um, something that needs to be addressed. Um, we don't have rules in our rule book yet, so we can't really do much about it for the regular 2024 season. Um, things are going to continue on as they have been. There's not going to be any testing as a sport. We're not big enough yet where we can have a testing pool or really handle things that way. Yeah. So instead, um, we are going to be instituting a drug testing policy for the national championship this year in the elite division. Um, why just the elite division? Well, it's cost. It's a cost thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's where the biggest prizes are. It's where the biggest opportunities are. It's where, you know, a good majority of the sponsorships go. Um, and it's a, a place that's pretty publicly known. Like yep. we, we put those names out there. We, we attach our name to their name. So um, we want to make sure that the people that are out there are doing it in a way that is safe, is healthy, and isn't jeopardizing the longevity of themselves and then in doing so, making it so other athletes can't be competitive. Yeah. Um, so with that, um, we're going to do it a little bit differently. Uh, a lot of the other sports that have done it have caught flack. CrossFit catches flack all the time because um, the way that they do their testing, their results aren't necessarily made public. Mm -hmm. um, so they test at random and then they keep the, the results of the test in house. And there's always been speculation and conspiracy and all kinds mm -hmm. of goofy shit about that. Um, so... Uh, those people that register and show up for the elite division at the national championship, they're going to be given a piece of paper when they show up and they're going to select somebody that they, and they don't have to put a name on there, but if there is a person that they feel needs to be tested for PEDs, they are going to write that name on a piece of paper. It is going to be a random draw or not a random draw. I'm sorry. It's going to be, uh, um, it, all those names are going to be collected. Mm -hmm. Um, and the three top three males and top three females with the most names that come out of that group, um, they're going to be tested. They're going to be tested in, in, in private, meaning we're not going to tell anybody who the names are. Mm -hmm. They're going to be contacted, um, that evening. They're going to have a blood drawn, a blood draw done. Um, and then should they pop positive? Mm -hmm. Um, that's when we will make the results public. Yeah. Um, it is also going to be managed and the results are going to be viewed by um, a panel that we are going to select. Yeah. So it's not just going to be held inside of our, um, like inside the tactical games. Yeah. It'd be a third party. It's going, well, uh, instead of a third party, I want it to be people that are involved in the sport. Um, we have always been, we decide on things as a sport. We did, like, we move as a sport. We have a community here. Um, so I want it to, I want this to be managed and tracked by those people. And mm -hmm. I want it to be managed and tracked by the community. I want it to be something that people like, they understand that we're not trying to hide shit. Cause like, I don't want people to do like, honestly, do I give a shit? No, I don't. Yeah. I don't care if you do steroids. Uh, I care if you do steroids and it affects other people's ability to come out and be competitive that aren't doing steroids that yeah. don't have the means to, that don't have the desire to, that want to have a long successful life. Um, now, of course, like if you're taking TRT and it's prescribed to you by a doctor, uh, that's not what we're yeah. looking for. Right. Yeah. Um, we are looking for people that are intentionally trying to cheat. Yeah. Um, and that's something that, that is like not, I don't believe it's prevalent in our sport, but there are bad actors yeah. in every place, right? So we see people that come out and like, there's a difference between trying to 
hit the very limit of a standard mm -hmm. and somebody who's trying to circumvent a process yeah. in order to gain a competitive advantage. Well, I mean, you, the perfect example is Arizona with the box step ups. If it's not said, if it's not explicitly written, somebody's going to game it, right? Yeah. So this is the exact same thing. This yeah. is no different. Um, and especially because prize, ego, pride, prizes are on the line, sponsorship, potential, all the goodies are on the line. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. So in that, um, if you are found to have pop positive for um, performance enhancing drugs, which we will publish a list, it will be something that you're not going to show up and we're going to be like, creatine. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Mark McGuire, the, the the John the John Jones popping hot, yeah, with creatine <laughs> or the Canelo Alvarez, the tainted meat. That, that's not what we're looking for, right? Or there was a chicken in CrossFit who was like, she she, uh, uh, she was very popular CrossFitter. Uh, she said she got SARMs in her mouth from her boyfriend's sperm, which I thought was very interesting. Um, that was one of those things. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I that that was like. <laughs> fair enough, that, fair but enough. Like, yeah. is that how you're getting yours how I asked it <laughs> <laughs> so anyways um it, we're 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 gonna be a, we're gonna be transparent about this yeah. it's gonna be something that like if you provide us a doctor's note and like um hey my doctor's been prescribing me peptides because i uh you know got back from afghanistan and like whatever the fuck happened yeah. and it's been something that like i have a record that i'm actually on this has been prescribed mm -hmm. we're not looking for those people right like we, we're looking for the people that are trying to cheat yeah. and trying to cheat to gain an advantage to get prizes. Um, so uh, that's the hot take. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think it's fair. You know, like it's there's there's a lot on the line, and as the sport continues to grow, there's going to be more on the line. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just a natural progression for the sport. UFC started doing it X amount of years ago, and you yeah. saw a lot of high end athletes that completely fell off and weren't the same from. Look at how John Jones is like. Dude, not, like ebb and dude, flow. Ebb and oh flow. my god, dude! Uh, Alistair Overeem. Yeah. You know, uh, there's, there's. I mean, names are endless, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a good, it's, it's a good idea, and it, and it's smart to you for the progression of the sport and as it grows. And I don't ever want to make it something that like it becomes contentious. Like I, I fucking hate that. I would, I would hate for people to not enjoy what they're doing anymore and enjoy mm -hmm. the sport anymore because they feel like people are cheating. Yeah. Like that's bullshit. I don't want to show up and get fucked up by somebody who's cheating. Like, mm -hmm. And that's it makes sense in fighting for sure, right? Yeah. Like if the dude you're fighting has been juicing yeah. and you are putting your life on the line because of it, it's definitely something you have to be concerned about. Yeah. Now, in this case, like if you are a law enforcement officer or a military member or just a competitor and like you want to come out and you're busting your ass to get better yeah. and somebody is busting their ass to get better as well, but also using some enhancements, something we need to take care of and we need to be concerned about. Yep. So um, we're going to address it. We're going to address it as a team. Yep. Um and if you are found to be, you know, caught positive, we're going to we're going to address that, too. And um, Nick's going to publicly shame you. Shame. Yep. I've got the bell already. There you go. We'll probably uh, kick you out of the sport. And um, I don't know what else we'll do. Maybe embarrass you publicly. Tar and feather. Tar and feather. Tar and yeah, feather. We don't want to embarrass them publicly. We'll just never talk about them again. <laughs> I think it's almost better, right? Because, like, there's people that gain celebrity from popping oh, yeah. positive. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah. we just we'll, they'll just them get rid of them completely and never you'll never see him again yeah it's like why I'll don't we see nick palacios anymore well because nick palacios was pop top for the pop top gh gh i don't know what that is <laughs> that's stuff that makes your belly big growth hormone it, oh it enlarges all your your organs how do you know about this dude, fucking cheater dude i'm fucking on i'm on it <laughs> oh well this has gone off the rails yeah uh, do you have yeah. anything else you want to say no, no. I'm like I said. I'm I'm excited for the next couple of months. We've got a, a really busy season coming up, and uh, some cool places to go see. And uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun year, man. I'm really, uh, I'm really excited to, to watch you and Ryan next to one another, so you guys can entangle your mustaches together, and then we can make one giant mustache out of two mustaches. Nick's jealous because he can't grow facial hair. I can't grow facial because <laughs> I'm Native American, and it's seven different colors. <laughs> dude, dude, but I don't know who came up to me. It was Mark. It was Mark, Mark was like, dude, why is your fucking Goatee, yeah. seven different <laughs> colors. It just grows in naturally, all white trash. You like that? I can't do shit about it. All right, you good? I'm good. Good, I'm good too. Well, uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. See you.